Well, praise the Lord, everyone. It's another edition of 153greatfish.website. Um, tonight, we're going to have a sermon by a woman who has passed away a few years ago named Nona Freeman. She wrote a book called Unseen Hands. You might be able to find a copy on Amazon. I highly recommend that you get this book. Uh, it'll really boost your faith. And it's the story of the... Uh, conversion of Ethiopian Christians to the Acts 238 Jesus name message. Um, and Nona Freeman was involved with it along with others. Well, here she is giving a message that all of us need to hear, especially yours truly. God bless you as you uh, pray after she delivers this message in Jesus name. I seem to get more answers from the Lord sometimes when I just pray off-handed prayers. Not long ago, just a few months ago, I said, Lord, I wish you would let me know why we're not reaching the world like we should. I thank God for the improvement. There's been a lot of improvement, Brother Kilgore, but we're still not reaching our world. They're being born and dying faster than we're reaching them all around the world, in America and everywhere else. That's why I get a burden for every place that I go to, because every place is surrounded and hemmed in by the lost, and we are not reaching them. And I just said, Lord, I wish you would tell me why. I appreciate so much what Brother Tenney said last night. I appreciate God anointed and led leadership, because what he said was what God said to me. He said there's too many spectators in the church and not enough participators. We're just looking around. We just come to see it down. And uh, uh, we're just there, one of the crowd, but we are not participating as we should. And this uh, shocked me because I didn't realize that we're just not putting anything into it. It doesn't mean everybody's got to go. I honestly believe that prayers are worth more than dollars. Uh, dollars are essential. We've got to have them. But it's the prayers that's going to carry us through. And, and then I, I prayed another offhanded prayer, and I said, Well, Lord, what's, what's it going to take to move us from being spectators to participators? And he gave me three words. Just three words. It's not complicated. These three words are actually found in Luke chapter 22. I will read verse 41 and 42. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's calf and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And Jesus said to me, and I appreciate the fact he talks to me, and he said, when my children move into the dimension of not my will, you see, we live our whole lives catering to our will. We go to great lengths, we, we work hard, and we spend our whole lives giving our will everything it wants. But if we ever come to the place that we'll say, not my will. Our great example said, not my will, but thy will be done. And oh, how it would change. I, I get so miserable. I hurt so bad when pleas are made for money. Because too many of our people have never learned to pray and say, Lord, what is it your will for me to do? How much should I give and what should I do? I, I find people are afraid of the will of God and I don't know why. And it's not just something you go down on your knees in a weepy kind of inspired service and, and you pray one time and say, Lord, I'll do your will. It's not my will, Lord, but your will. And it's all settled one day. It's sort of an everyday thing. And there's so many pitfalls that we can fall into. I remember a man, a barber in Derrida, Louisiana, said to Brother Freeman one day, I want to talk to you, Brother Freeman. 
He said, listen, my, I've inherited some money. Well, my wife, actually, I think it was. And uh, he said, There's, they're adding a new subdivision into Ritter. And he said, I've got enough cash to build three houses. But he said, I don't want to quit barbering, and I don't know anything about building, and you, you've built churches and everything. And he said, and my heart tells me you're an honest man. He said, I don't want to take away from your ministry and you just work on, my, on this project of mine. But he said, if you'll just see that it's done right. He said, all you have to do is just check out those guys that's supposed to be doing the work. And uh, when, if you'll just do that, if you'll just sort of uh, see that the workmen do their job and that they don't rip me off, he said, then when we get those three houses built, he said, well, I'll sell them and I'll give you half. And uh, he said, uh, uh, half of the total sale price is yours. He said, then we'll take the other half of that money and build as far as it goes and everything we build. From their own, you get half of all the profits. And there's place out there for a lot of houses. And Brother Freeman said, I, well, I, I'll have to pray about this. He said, well, why do you have to pray about it? He said, you're not investing any money. It, all it's going to cost you is just a little bit of your time. Brother Freeman said, I've got to know if it's God's will for me to do that. I'm so thankful to have lived and worked by the side of a man that knows that his will is the thing that's important. He went back to the man the next day and said, I'm sorry, I can't do it. He said, you're a fool. He said, do you know that you're walking away from thousands of dollars? He said, this, just think what this could mean. You could do a lot for the work of God with the money that you would get. He said, but it's not God's will. He said, do you have any idea why? Would you just tell me why? He said, we've been trying to go to Africa for nearly 10 years. And I, I feel like that the time's getting close. We got hindered by World War II, and then a, another baby come along, and this and that. Uh, but he said, I believe that, that the time is near, uh, and I, I can't get involved in, in houses and lands. I, I've got to be ready, because if the door opens, uh, we're going to go through it. We've been wanting to for so long. And he said, well, you're still a fool. He said, just work at it then until you go. He said, no, no. He said, it's not God's will. And thanks for the offer. I appreciate it. And uh, it was just a few days later, maybe two or three weeks later, that they phoned us. We'd been trying so hard to get on a boat. It was all it was then. And we couldn't find a place on a boat for a family of seven. And just a few days later, we got that phone call. Can you leave for Africa in six days? And... <laughs> I'm so grateful today. I'm so grateful. But you see, every day of our life, every day of our life, there's a statement that I've got to make now. I want to make it to this many folks that are here. It's very important. We were made our last trip to Africa uh, in that position. Uh, we're already retired. I guess another last trip to Africa we made from January through April, most of April. And uh, I got letters. And we got phone calls and said, we know this trip is awful hard on you folks. And, and then the letters begin to come in. I know you're going to miss Africa. And I, I know you're going to be grieving. And, uh, uh, hey, folks, you don't understand the will of God. Uh, when, when God shows me his will, I ain't grieving over nothing. <laughs> I, I refuse to grieve about Africa or anything because... Uh, listen, I'm going forward, and I'm looking forward, and, and I'm going to move in His will, and, uh, and hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You're not going to find me sitting around whining. I enjoyed that. I gave it all I had. If I failed, I've asked Him to forgive me. And where I failed, I've asked for forgiveness. But I, I, I tried, and I worked at it, and His will is something else. Hallelujah, here I come. Uh, he even... He even gave me a beautiful little poem, and I wish I'd have brought it with me, and I've tried to remember, but all I can come up with is the first two lines, and it says, this chapter ends as a good chapter should, with Jesus leading as we knew he would. 
I, I, that's all I can remember of it. But this is another chapter. And I'm not going into a new chapter with a whine and grieve. And, uh, what is there to grieve over? If, if His will is, is this why? Hallelujah. I, I'm happy. I want you to know we're happy. We're not grieving over anything. But we're rejoicing in the sweet will of God. Hallelujah. 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 I was praying in the night last night, and I said, oh God, the few words that I've got a chance to say, what do those people that will be there, and he knew who'd be here, I didn't, what do they need to hear? He said, they need to understand it's time to say those three words and mean it as you've never meant anything in your life. Not my will, God. Oh, hasn't the time that's passed been enough to just do your thing and be concerned with yourself? Oh, if only people could understand if you began to invest yourself into this great and glorious cause. And remember, if you're not, you're one of the causes that we're not seeing more. I get so tired of people coming whining to me saying but well, why isn't God doing it in America? Because of the spectators, that's why. If you're a spectator this morning, say, it's my fault. I've seen us in our services when they rolled in wheelchairs and we prayed over them and screamed and shouted and jumped and rubbed them and patted them and then tried to stand them up and they fell on the floor and the miracle didn't happen. And God says, I don't do miracles for spectators. <laughs> and I think about Ethiopia where those precious people heard about this conference up on the top of a mountain. And so quickly the, the village people uh, made crude stretchers. They just uh, tied a piece of cloth over a couple of poles. And here they went carrying the helpless and the lame and the crippled and people that had been unable to move their bodies for years and had been totally dependent on others for years and they started carrying them up there. But you see, when they got up there, to, uh, approaching where these people were gathered together, there were no spectators there. They were all participators. And as they got close, they didn't even get quite there. As they came into the edge of the crowd, the power of God hit the, the people on the stretchers and they all jumped up. And they began to jump up and down and praise God and shout hallelujah and rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No spectators. Every one of them participators in there doing something. Don't sit there like a bump on a log. Do something. Do something. Be a spectator no longer. Begin to be a participator and do something for Jesus while you've got the time.